Hello and welcome back to my channel. It's that time of year again where I switch over my wardrobe from autumn winter to spring summer. And this time it's quite special because this is the first switch over that I'm doing in the new house and in my new wardrobe space since we built it at the start of this year. So at the moment my wardrobe is heavy on the coats and other outerwear. I've got all my seasonal accessories out like scarves, woolly beanie hats, snoods and gloves and of course my rather extensive knitwear collection which takes up the majority of the drawer space that I have in here. I have my bag stored in the units on the other side, my winter shoe selection is still out and I have accumulated a pile of new in items which I need to integrate back in during this changeover. Right, I've got some water to keep hydrated and the first thing I'm going to do is roll up the rug and remove it from this room so that it doesn't collect dust from all of the moving around and it's much easier for me to hoover the hard flooring and avoid any damage to the rug when bringing out my storage tub. Okay, so the first area I'm going to start with is the full length rail, which is currently holding all of my coats. So as usual, I remove everything from the rail and I transfer it all to portable rails, which are just outside on the landing. This is just a temporary storage spot for now until I have some empty tubs to pack away my coats. Next, moving on to blazers and jackets. Now, as I wear blazers through spring and even summer, all I do here is just an edit of the selection that I have, removing only the pieces which I see as predominantly winter items. So for example, puffer jackets and any heavier wool items, and they go to join the coats out on the portable rails so that they're out of the way. As I have a habit of doing my changeover too early, I have left myself some wool jackets just in case we get a cold snap because British springtime can be very unpredictable indeed. Moving on to trousers and the method is the same as the blazers and jackets. I'm not removing everything from the rail. I'm simply going through and pulling out the pairs which I know I won't really wear for the next six months or so. I don't have a specific set of criteria for this. It's just using my judgment and knowing what kind of outfits I'll be putting together for spring summer and also being aware of the trousers that I have from my store storage tubs from memory that will be added to this selection. I have a set of open shelves at one side of my wardrobe space and I use these for storing my most worn shoe edit for that season. So for autumn winter it tends to be mainly trainers and then a few of my most worn boots. As this area can be reassessed for the new season I'm removing all pairs from the shelves so that I have a clean canvas to work with when I get to shoes later on. It also gives me a chance to clean the shelves as well. Now on to drawers. The two drawers that I used for accessories are mainly full of winter items. I know I won't be needing scarves so I'm removing all of those from the top drawer and in the bottom drawer I've got a bit of a mix so again I'm removing the cold weather items like cashmere snoods, gloves, wrist warmers and my collection of beanie hats. But you'll see that I also have some baseball caps in here which I wear all year round so these I'm going to leave in here along with my rain hats for now. Below my full length rail I have a long drawer which I currently have long cardigans and knitted dresses in. These tend to be items that I wear a lot around the house and actually I'm going to keep that drawer exactly as it is for now because it's nice to have that cosy loungewear for the chilly spring mornings ahead. Moving on to my knitwear drawers. Knitwear is an absolute passion of mine. I'm very much a collector, but I do wear it all year round, even in summer when the evenings get a little bit cooler. That said, I do have some knitwear which I see as very much autumn winter knitwear. It could be down to the thickness or even the design. So these are the pieces which I'm going to edit out of the knitwear drawers. Anything removed from these drawers is just going to one side, keeping them in the same category and trying to keep everything together in as neat a pile as possible, just so that my workspace remains tidy and organized. Now, as you can see, I'm leaving some items of knitwear in the drawers, which I'll be keeping out for the next couple of seasons. But when I go to reorganize the drawers later on, these might all get shifted around as I add in my spring summer knits. 
Now to free up my floor space, I'm just moving my knitwear edit piles to higher ground on top of the chests of drawers. Again, keeping piles neat and tidy, refolding where necessary and keeping the categories together so it's easy when I come to pack these items away. Heading into my Eve storage space now and I have all my spare hangers right at the front of the hatch for convenience. So they're the first things I'm gonna take out so that I have something to start hanging my spring summer items on. Speaking of which, I need to bring out all of my storage tubs which are full of my spring summer wardrobe and I'm pulling out absolutely every tub that I have in there so that I can see how much I have to work with. Because the tubs are transparent, I can also see which categories are in each tub and it makes things easier when it comes to unpacking in my desired order. Some of my tubs are a little bit worse for wear after moving, but I hate wasting things. So as long as they're still usable, I won't replace them until absolutely necessary. Now to unpack the tubs one by one and I've chosen to start off with dresses because these will go on the full length rail where the coats were. That's currently empty so it makes sense to start filling up that area first. And this is where those spare hangers come into play as I can start transferring the dresses and hanging them directly on the rail as I go without having to remove the hangers from the coats which currently have nowhere to be packed away. I need to empty a spring summer tub before I can fill it back up with autumn winter but this is my system and it works like a charm. Now I've emptied my first tub I can start filling it back up with some of the coats which are out on the rail which also frees up more hangers and I'm starting off with the most bulky items which are taking up the most space and that's my puffer coats. To optimise on space, I could use vacuum bags to shrink these down even more, but to be honest, I've got just the right amount of tubs at the moment, so it's not something I have a need for. But they're a great idea if you have limited space and you really need to make the most of it. Moving on to my next tub of spring summer now and on the top it's blazers and some other outerwear like trenches. So I'm doing the same process as I did with dresses, unpacking and hanging straight away on the hangers that have now been freed up from some of the coats. Each piece can be slotted into the relevant position within my colour spectrum. Using the word colour very vaguely there. Now I've hung my trench coats at the end of the full length rail next to dresses and I've brought back my two raincoats which were on the rails in the hall. These are the only coats which I'm keeping out from my autumn winter selection. So I'm really hoping it doesn't snow. Going back to the tubs now and continuing to pack the other spring summer categories, I do edit out pieces which I no longer want to keep as I go along and I pop these into a separate pile to one side so that I can assess it later on. Repeating the process of hanging and arranging by colour with trousers and then any folded categories like knitwear and basics and categories like shirts which I'm currently undecided on where they're actually going to go and also any accessories like bags. These all just go in designated piles on the floor for now. So at this point the majority of the floor is taken up by my piles of categories which need designated homes for the next six months or so. So to clear some much needed floor space, as I'll need to start folding soon, I'm just going to start putting some storage tubs, which I've already filled up with autumn winter, away into the Eve storage space. Now I enjoy folding in any form of organisation, but this part is just so time consuming. I'm starting off with basics and after assessing the space that I have, I've decided that I'm going to use the two drawers which previously had my accessories in. So I'm relocating my hats to another area. I'm just giving the drawers a quick clean with all the moving around it can be easy to accumulate dust and now it's on to the folding. So as you might have seen in the video where I moved into this wardrobe at the start of the year I have started folding vertically to optimise space and also for visibility. I didn't have basics out during autumn winter as I wear thermals as a base layer so I didn't need them so this is my first time folding basics in the vertical format so I might have to have a play around with these to get the right proportions for the drawers. But essentially when it comes to vertical folding there's lots of different methods out there with basic t-shirts I'm just folding in the sides to my designated width for the drawers and then folding up the neckline to about halfway doing the same with the bottom hems so that they both meet in the middle and then folding that in half 
just so that it's the right size for slotting into the drawer. When the drawer starts to fill, it's kind of like a filing cabinet system. You can flick through the garments vertically rather than having to lift them up if stacked one on top of another. So again, I'm organizing by color from light to dark and also by fabric. Any cotton t-shirts are in the main section and then the slinky fabric t-shirts, which needed to be folded down even more due to their lack of structure, are filling in the sides of the drawer. I'm then repeating the process for my vests, which require an entire drawer to themselves. I'm also a collector of vests, it seems. And obviously as vests are much smaller garments, I had to play around with the folding ratio and method until I came up with something that works. They're more rolled up as opposed to folded, but it's still great for slotting into the drawer and having that filing cabinet style visibility. Moving on to the piles of knitwear now, and as I had knitwear previously folded vertically for autumn winter, I feel confident folding my spring summer pieces in the same way and then I'm reorganizing the drawers giving them a bit of a shuffle around so that the knitwear sits with other similar styles in terms of thickness, fabric, any prints like stripes etc. Now that I have some big floor piles out of the way and some empty tubs, before I move on, I'm going to pack away the rest of my coats. These are all of the wool, cashmere and cashmere blend coats that I have left on the portable rails. So when storing these coats away, I popped them into breathable garment bags that I bought a few years ago. It's just for extra protection against pests like moths. Although I've never had an issue with them before, this is a new house to me, so I'm just taking extra precautions. I keep each coat on its hanger as it's easier to pop in the garment bag that way. And the great thing about these garment bags is that they have a transparent window across the front so that you can see what's inside without having to unzip the bag. I zip the bag leaving a gap at the top so I can remove the hanger because I'm gonna need those. And then I lay the coat on the floor so that I can fold it into thirds. Still leaving the bag unzipped slightly at the top so that I can force the air to escape. Once it's folded, I can zip it all the way up and pack away into the tub. I've currently got a few tubs which are empty so I can pack away all the remaining coats that I have on the rails, repeating the garment process until they're full, but not overstuffed. I still like to have a little bit of breathing room in each tub. I unpack skirts and shorts, which are obviously part of my spring summer wardrobe, but I've decided to repack these back into a small tub, which I'll keep right at the front of the Eve storage for now until I manage to get those three additional IKEA drawers, which I am still waiting to come back in stock. Once I get those and paint them, my skirts and shorts can go into two of those, and then the hats that I move from the other drawer can go into the third. Another category which I didn't have out during autumn winter because I don't wear them during that time is shirts. So I've had to think about where they can go and whether they should be folded or hung. I've decided hanging is the best option for shirts and eventually when I pull out some of the wool jackets that I left out for now in the blazer jacket section, they can move into there. But for now, I'm just gonna slot them in between the dresses and the trench coats on the full length rail as there's plenty of space up there. Now onto bags. I do pack away my spring summer bags because they wouldn't get anywhere during winter. So I now have basket bags and canvas bags that need to make their way into my bag units. So to free up some space, I'm gonna remove any bags which I don't think I'll get any wear out of during spring, summer, but I'm also trying to keep out as many as possible because aside from basket, canvas, and woven leather bags, I do feel that leather bags in general aren't particularly seasonal and can be worn all year round. I keep all my bags stuffed to maintain their shape and I keep a box which I fill with tissue from any deliveries that I get so I always have plenty to hand for bag stuffing if needed. The majority of my bags are kept in their dust bags, but with summer bags, I tend to leave them as they are because they'll be used more frequently and some of them are high street, so they didn't come with dust bags anyway. In terms of a storage method for bags, it pretty much is trial and error. I just have to rejig them all until they all fit in the space that I have. Moving on to footwear now, and I have a tub of non-designer shoes like Birkenstocks and other sandals, a few pairs of canvas trainers. And when these go into storage, I pack them out with tissue paper as you can see here so that they maintain their shape but when they come out and they go into the wardrobe I remove the tissue. Now I'm going to start adding what I foresee as being my most worn pairs to the open shelves at the end of the wardrobe. 
As most spring summer shoes tend to be much lower, I actually have more empty space between the shelves. So I am going to add in more shelves so that I have more options in this area. And that's the beauty of the pack system and it's why I opted for this system. You can adjust the shelves to different heights or you can add and remove as necessary. I keep all my designer shoes in their original boxes when they're stored away for a certain season. So I'm also getting those out and popping them to one side so I can assess how many additional shelves I might need to add to the shelf section and where they're all going to go. The rest can go in a cupboard which is directly outside my wardrobe, but I haven't quite figured out a storage solution for that space yet. Stay tuned. Now that everything aside from some shoes has been put away in its new home, I'm going to store any storage tubs still left out back into the eaves, give the floor a thorough hoover to get rid of all the dust and then fetch the rug and roll it back into position before starting my final task of the switch over. Steaming. Now there's a lot of linen and cotton garments which have been in tubs for a few months so there are a lot of creases on show. I have a couple of steamers, a stand-up, more industrial one, and this portable one from Steamery, which blends in very well with the aesthetic of my wardrobe. With this, I use Steamery's steam water, which is specifically formulated to not require a descaler, as I have lost a portable steamer in the past to a severe case of limescale buildup from living in London, where the tap water was very hard. So it's always worth using a product like this, or at least using a descaler in your steamer and or your iron regularly to prolong their lifespan. Now I usually steam or iron items as needed, for example whenever I go to wear them, but I've decided to be proactive this season and to start steaming groups of garments at a time. Not all in one go, because I'm already feeling like I need a major nap after today, but just steaming groups of say five garments at a time as and when I have the time to do it. As I'm very much about the aesthetics, I just would find it visually pleasing to have everything in here steamed and well presented. Well, there we go guys, finally this switchover is complete. I still need to get those additional shelves for the most worn shoe area, although I did have one spare which I managed to paint and add in, but I've realised I have space for a further three which can display nine more pairs of shoes. And I also still need those three IKEA drawers for the bottom space in the slim tower on the right. But patience is a virtue. The drawers are all neatly organized by category and by color and everything vertically folded from my denim to my plethora and beloved collection of knitwear. My summer bags have been integrated into my bag storage units and it's been a great relief to see that everything has fit perfectly within each space for each category. I wasn't quite sure how it was gonna go as this was my first time doing a switch over in this wardrobe. And finally, I figured out a storage solution for my shoe overflow, AKA the trainer cupboard. I bought these stackable boxes, which measured up perfectly to fit three columns across. They've got clear hinged doors so I can see which styles are in which box. And the back of the boxes is perforated to allow for breathability. So I'll leave you now with this final image of storage porn for all you fellow organizers out there. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time.